And in fact, Egypt goes through exactly the punishment that God pronounces. About 350 BC, give or take a few years, Alexander the Great walks in and takes out Egypt. And from that moment on, Egypt becomes someone else's possession. And they live and die by the sword, even to this day. Guys, why am I making a big deal about this? Aside from the fact that these chapters are one-eighth of the book of Ezekiel, it's because this shows something. God is willing and able to judge the people of the world. In the first 24 chapters of this book, we see God preparing his judgment on his people and then delivering it. And now we see God preparing his judgment on the people around his people and delivering it. God will judge. God will hold the people of this planet accountable for something. And no matter what it is, they will not be able to stand. God will judge. Don't worry about that. You see, it's a small comfort to say that God will judge. We want the pain to stop and we want it to stop now. We want the criminals to get what's coming to them. But when God works, he doesn't do a half a job. He does the whole thing and he does it properly. It's like when um, a parent says to a child, clean your bedroom. Okay, And the, the child says, you can see the floor. You can get from the door to the bed and to the desk if you've got one. That's clean. And the parent says, no, actually, no. You know, I, I'd like to see your bed actually on the floor, not piled four feet off the floor with all the stuff you've shoved under it. You know, we want dirty clothes put in the laundry or maybe even in the washing machine which is turned on properly. We want the water to be able to be open without having stuff fall out of it. I, when I was a kid, my parents uh, had a threat which was, if you don't clean it up, I will. And I knew that if they cleaned it up, there'd be nothing left. Everything would just be in the bin. You know what? We say to God, why don't you fix this? Is that too hard? Is it too much to ask? And God says, I can fix it. But you're not ready for me to fix it. When God judges the mass murderers, he'll do it properly. No aspect of their life will remain unexamined. No detail will be overlooked. But when he, when he judges the mass murderers, he's going to judge the child abusers. And when he judges the child abusers, he's going to judge the adulterers and the porn watchers and the drunkards and the liars and the gossips and the guilty and the greedy and the selfish. When God comes to judge them, he's going to judge you and me. Are you ready for that? Most people on this planet aren't. Are you ready for that? When Jesus returns, he will judge the people of this planet not by the colour of their skin, not by the content of the wallets, not by their atar, but by the content of their character. And he will find you wanting. And he will find you wanting. And he will find me wanting. If we stand on our merits, we are stuffed. If we stand and say, God, I'm not that bad. We're gone. The only way that we will stand before God is with Jesus. The only way that we can stand before God and say, judgment time, I'm ready for it, is if Jesus has taken the judgment for us already. Because he will find us wanting. I don't know about you, but today I've stuffed up. It's this past hour and a half, I've messed up. I've been selfish. If God said to you right now, 
Time's up. Let's look at the books. You, you wouldn't like that. I know if it was up to me, I wouldn't either. I, I want to see people turn to Jesus. And, and people go, well, there's all the Jesus stuff. Because without Jesus, you're gone. Excuse me, but you're screwed without Jesus. I, uh, I want to see people turn to Jesus. I don't want to see people go to hell. If you ever hear a Christian, someone who says they're a Christian, say, oh, you know, they deserve to go to hell. Not a Christian. Because they don't understand hell. I don't want that for anyone. I don't want that for the worst person. I don't want hell. And uh, there's people I would find it very difficult to tell them about Jesus. I'm telling you now. But I don't want hell. I want people to know where God is. I'll tell you where God is right now. Right now, God's in Norway. And he is holding the people who have lost loved ones. And he is judging that man who will be judged. And if he, if he doesn't turn to Christ, he is really in bad shape. He didn't stop Anders because that is the judgment which is to come and we're not ready for it yet. Do you have any questions? It's perhaps a little heavier than we are expecting, I know. And let's pray. Father, it's, um, we live in a world surrounded by sin. Uh, we live in a world of our sin and our suffering and our pain. And Lord, we, um, we're ashamed of the sin that we have in our life. And so we, we're thankful that you have offered to forgive us for it. Father, there's just so many people. I, I, could, I could just start listing people now and just keep going on and on all night. The people I want to see come to, to faith. And I know everyone here also could do that too. So we ask that you would save those known to us, that they would come into your kingdom. And for anyone here tonight, Lord, who's not sure of that, I pray you'd give them your spirit. And they'd know you. Father, please help us not to be judgmental because hell is a terrible place. I guess, Lord, we also pray for people in Norway that they would know your spirit and know your comfort and turn to you in the midst of tragedy. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Final song, guys.